Hey everyone, my name is Ford from NorCal Thrills. Today I'm bringing you an update from California's Great America for July 18th, 2021. My apologies for such a delayed update. I've been so busy that I completely forgot that I hadn't made this update yet. The biggest news from the park last month was undoubtedly the opening of the Taste of Orleans Festival. In this update, I'll share my experience at the festival with the food and live music that it brought. But it's not the only new thing that month. I'll also share some news about Whitewater Falls and the other closed rides as well as the new South Bay Cantina. So let's get started with the update. Taste of Orleans was without a doubt the biggest change in the park that week and was the first special event the park had hosted since Winterfest of 2019. Like the Taste of Orleans events from 2019 and earlier, the event was organized around two things, food and music. So let's talk about each of those. For me, the biggest draw of Taste of Orleans has to be the food and drink. And like 2019, Taste of Orleans featured a food tasting that allowed you to try a variety of Cajun dishes at the various booths set up around Orleans Place. Six dishes cost $35, or nine would set you back 50. The dishes themselves range from New Orleans staples like gumbo and jambalaya, to more exotic choices like crawfish and gator, to delicious desserts like plantains and king cake. Some of my personal favorites included the aforementioned crawfish etouffee and alligator chowder, as well as a particularly delicious couple of beignets. The tasting was a little pricey, but the portions were pretty good, and I definitely filled myself up with the six tastings I bought. In addition to the food, there was also a beer tasting at booths around the area. The beers were mostly local craft beers instead of Cajun ones, but they still had a great variety of beers for guests to sample. If you're talking about New Orleans, you have to talk about live music, and Taste of Orleans delivered on that front, playing plenty of Cajun-style music. Like in 2019, there was a big stage set up in front of Flight Deck, where various performers would play throughout the day. But unlike 2019, there was also a small stage set up at the entrance to the Redwood Amphitheater that had another band playing at the same time. Both of these stages featured plenty of seating, and I definitely enjoyed grabbing some food and just sitting and listening to the music. And finally, I can't talk about Taste of Orleans without giving some more of the small details that came along with the event. The picture building in Orleans Place was replaced with a merchandise store that had one of those spinning wheel games where you can win prizes. The merch for the festival does deserve some props as well. I love the look of it. Like 2019, the night ended with fireworks and as such, Flight Deck closed a little early. The entrance to Orleans Candy Kitchen was decorated with a massive voodoo doll. My favorite piece of Taste of Orleans continued to be this cheesy plastic crocodile wearing beads that sat under Delta Flyers. And finally, we'll close out this section of Taste of Orleans with a look at some of the other decorations around the area. Props to the park for putting on a fantastic event. The food and the entertainment were both better than I remember from 2019, and the area was as well decorated as always. The event should be back next year, and I look forward to seeing how the park improves on it further. The biggest non-Taste of Orleans news in the park was the reopening of Whitewater Falls. After being closed the entire beginning of the year, Whitewater Falls finally reopened at the beginning of July and not a moment too soon. It was great to see an almost full queue for the ride and plenty of happy, soaked patrons on the ride and on the bridge. There's nothing better than a good water ride in the middle of summer. But the rest of the closed rides in the park weren't quite so lucky. Berserker looked about the same as it did last month, albeit with a new sign out front that indicated that the ride wouldn't be reopening until late 2021. 
Glad to see Great America indicate how important and special the ride is, though. Orbit was in just about the same position as last month, looking around the same, but with a new sign. I especially like the retro styling all around Orbit. Hopefully it won't be more than a couple months until these rides are back to operating like normal. July also saw the opening of the other new restaurant for 2021, South Bay Cantina. This eatery across from Mass Effect serves Mexican food like nachos and burritos. When you walk in, you'll be greeted by a setup that looks something like a Chipotle, with an assembly line where you can select your burrito toppings. The rest of the restaurant is lightly decorated, but still looks so much better than Outback Shack, which it replaced. My burrito itself was surprisingly large and filling. The steak was a little tough, but the rest of the toppings more than made up for it, and I'm planning on making this my go-to spot for my meal plan. Let's run through a couple of other quick updates. There were a handful of new signs around the park of haunt construction, including this tooth barrier near the Tooth Fairy house, as well as some cranes around Massacre Manor. Like I mentioned last month, as long as we don't regress significantly, there's no reason why we can't have some sort of haunt this year. A couple of the remaining closed restaurants, including Pizza Company and Game Time Sports Bar, were finally opened. And just in time, the park was among the most crowded I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen Rip Roaring Rapids with this long of a line on a Sunday. I'm very glad for the park that they're making up for the lost year last year, and I know that the more we visit this year, the more likely we'll have new attractions over the next couple years. And I'll leave you with this quick clip of Railblazer. And there it is, another update from California's Great America for July of 2021. It was so good to see festivals back at the park after such a long time away, and as always, Great America did it right. I enjoyed the food, music, and general atmosphere, so if you get the chance, definitely make your way down for Taste of Orleans next year. As for me, my next visit at Great America will be in a couple of weeks, where I'll hopefully be able to see some haunt updates. I promise I'll be quicker on the upload next time.